Shabbat shalom, everyone. I hope this finds you well. This week's parsha is Beha'alotcha, and it a lot of uh, a lot of ex- exciting things happen. So it opens with the commandment of God uh, to Moshe that we should have a menorah in the temple, and the menorah is supposed to be hammered all out of one piece of gold, uh, and that all the branches should come from this one piece, so it is formed from the same block of gold. The next thing that's commanded is that Moses is told to tell Aaron, to tell Aaron, his brother, the high priest, that he should light this lamp, he should light this lamp. And then the text says, and Aaron did so. There are a lot of different commentaries that kind of break into what this really means. So, and Aaron did so. The first, the first sort of like uh, commentary is that Aaron did it uh, and didn't deviate from the command at all. He didn't add any extra flourishes. He didn't do it with. He did it with the same amount of energy and fervor and belief in God and belief in the commandment uh, every single day. Another commentary by the Ramban Nachmanides uh, is that uh, Aaron did this every day of his life, and Aaron did this. It implies that he did it every single day. So I think often about commandments or things that we do every single day. For example, when we say Hamotzi, when we uh, you know say the, the prayer for bread. That are we really thinking about like blessed art that like and you know the, tra- the translations of course are not so accessible but blessed are you Lord our God King of the Universe who brings forth bread from the earth okay and now we eat but if we actually think about these words it's really powerful and I've likened this a few times uh, to how it is when you sing in a foreign language so in college Leah and I sang in four languages a lot. And sometimes, you know, it's, it's a, you know, it's a boring song, who cares, whatever, it's lyrics in another language you don't really truly understand. And if you look into the lyrics, oftentimes it's extremely powerful stuff. You can have like really gorgeous prose that's now being in Italian, so you can't super understand it. But if you, if you think about the words and you think about what the actual intention is, it gives a completely different uh, feeling than just kind of doing it on autopilot. So the one blessing that I think I think and I really try to be conscious about and be not uh, mundane about is the blessing that you say right when you wake up in the morning, Modani. Modani doesn't have uh, doesn't have the name of God. It's Moda Ani Lefanacha. I give my thanks before you, Melech Haivekayam, God living and eternal. Shehechazarta binishmati. Shehechazarta that you returned uh, my soul within me. Binishmati my soul within me. Bechemla within me, uh, Raba and Munatecha. Uh, abundant is your faithfulness. So the last two words, and I talk about, I've talked about this a few times, are so powerful. So this whole thing is saying, thank you, God, for returning my soul to me after I was sleeping, because we have this idea that when we sleep, our souls depart and they uh, cleave to the heavens, because our earthly existence is so hard for our very heavenly souls. Um, our souls are the only thing about us that is not uh, tangible and. Uh, uh, mundane in the way that our, our physical bodies are. And so at night, our souls are so craving heavenly divineness that they leave our bodies. And then in the morning, only in the morning is our soul returned to us. And so this idea of Sheikh Azarcha, that you returned my soul to me, it's a very, uh, it's a passive thing for us. We think, oh, I woke up. No, your soul was returned to you, if we're thinking about it in the symbolic sense. Your soul was returned to you, and the only reason you woke up this morning was because it was returned to you by God, meaning that God believes that you should have woken up today. And the last phrase is what's so powerful to me, Rabba Emunatecha. It's Emunatecha, not Emunati. It's your faith, not my faith. Like, oh, how great, how great my faith is. Oh, that's nice. But if you're saying how great your faith is, like how great your faith God is in me, that's really, that's really powerful. And so I really do focus on this a lot. The idea is that your soul has been returned to you on purpose. No one wakes up in the morning accidentally. Uh, you wouldn't be woken up if you weren't meant to exist today, which means that every single day that we wake up, we have some sort of mission. We have some sort of tough kid, some sort of purpose that we are supposed to fulfill that day. And it's our job to find out exactly what that purpose is. And the way we can be more conscious about finding that purpose is being more conscious about the... Uh, the prayers that we say. Um, there's a lot of really powerful prayers that we can we can talk about, and maybe we'll talk about this more in depth next week. But there's a whole section in the back of most sitters, um, most prayer books, that's a list of blessings that you say when you when when uh, blessings for rare occurrences. So uh, we say the Shechianu when there's something you haven't done in a uh, in a year. Um, we say this uh, when you see a sunset. There's a blessing um, where we say uh, Ma Rabu Ma Secha Hashem. Wow, uh, how 
how marabu like how great are these wonders that you have created god um there's also one for thunder there's one for there's one for thunder and lightning i think this was one for a rainbow um the rainbow one of course is related to the breach the covenant that we um uh, agreed with god upon after noah's ark because of course as we know the rainbow keshet uh, was the symbol in the sky after noah's ark but there are lots of different beautiful blessings and those kind of blessings it's just uh, thoughtfulness, it's mindfulness, it's reminding us, you know, these things don't exist just on their own. Uh, creation is amazing and wonderful and we can, we can have a really active part in appreciating it and making our own lives more meaningful by being more conscious and more mindful. So that is a Parsha this week. There are other few things that happen. Um, the Jewish people are, are tired of their manna, their man in the desert, which is supposed to be some sort of like coriander seed, millet, flour, uh, bread type things. Um, they're tired of it and they, they, they want meat. They want something more delicious that like, they, like they've had back in Egypt. Of course, they have rose colored glasses about how their life was in Egypt. And God is like, you, fine, I'll give you meat. You'll have so much meat that you'll be absolutely sick of it. And I really connected to that idea. I know I say this often, but I, whatever blood type I am, I'm the blood type that I need red meat. I do. And there was one week that one of my friends brought me back this, like, uh, these two lamb shoulders. And I love lamb, as most people know. Um, and I was like, oh my god, I'm totally gonna make this. But it was like two in one package. I was like, oh no, it's fine. I'm like, I'll like eat it as like my lunch and my dinner. And I literally had these two large lamb shoulders. And I made them. They were great. But like, I'm like halfway through the second one. And I'm like, this is a lot. And I thought about this Parsha. <laughs> I really did. Because like... Uh, we we we, got, we can't be gluttonous. We can't uh, we can't um, overexert ourselves with the things that we eat. So I definitely connected to that. At the end of the parsha is where uh, Miriam is afflicted with Sarah'at, the uh, leprosy type disease that you get when you speak lashon hara. There's more to this, but um, basically Miriam recognized that Moshe, being a, this holy man of God, had to be ready to speak with God at any moment, and so. In order to be ready to speak with God at any moment, you have to be ritually pure, which means you can't be laying with your wife and then go speak to God. So at all times, Moshe had to be ready just in case God wants to speak to him. So he and his wife did not live in the same house. And apparently, this is according to our commentators, uh, Miriam made a comment that it must be really hard for Zipporah, for Moshe's wife, to not be able to live in the same home as him. And for this, she was afflicted with Sarat. And there's a lot that we can uh, we can we can look into about that one, but I think it's it's often thought that Miriam was like speaking badly. She called uh, Tzipora a Kushite, which is like a uh, like a derogatory name in the Torah for someone who has um, who's from Ethiopia, uh, which like there are different interpretations. But the interpretation that I find most compelling is that she was just um, a sister-in-law being concerned for her sister-in-law, um, which I think is is kind of touching. And I'm sorry that she received leprosy for it. But yeah, those are the ideas. Be mindful, don't be gluttonous, um, and don't speak unkindly about people or you will develop leprosy. We see it exactly in this Parsha. Um, okay, Shabbat Shalom everyone. Thanks so much for listening and I will, God willing, see you next week.